initiation of muscle contraction. Muscle action begins with a signal coming from the brain. This electrochemical signal is sent from the brain down the spinal cord to the motor neuron existing at the neuromuscular junction. The motor neuron at the neuromuscular junction will then fire an action potential. The action potential is carried as positively charged sodium ions down the axon of the motor neuron. When these positively charged sodium ions reach the axon terminal, this triggers the opening of voltage-gated calcium channels. When these channels open, calcium floods into the axon terminal. The presence of calcium in the axon terminal triggers the release of synaptic vesicles from their docking sites. Then the synaptic vesicles fuse to the presynaptic membrane and release neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. The type of neurotransmitter used at the neuromuscular junction is acetylcholine. Acetylcholine, once released, will passively diffuse across the synaptic cleft of the neuromuscular junction. These molecules will then bind to nicotinic acetylcholine receptors located on the muscle fiber. Nicotinic acetylcholine receptors are ligand-gated sodium ion channels. When acetylcholine binds to these receptors, the ion channels open and sodium floods into the muscle fiber. Sodium is a positively charged ion, so the, so the addition of sodium in the muscle fiber causes a localized depolarization. If there is enough depolarization, nearby voltage-gated sodium channels will then open. When voltage-gated sodium channels are opened, there is a further influx of positively charged sodium ions entering the muscle fiber. This further depolarizes the muscle fiber, triggering even more voltage-gated sodium channels to open. This chain reaction is the action potential. This action potential is then propagated across the sarcolemma and down the T-tubules. When the action potential is propagated, voltage-gated calcium channels located on the sarcoplasmic reticulum will open. When these channels open, the sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium ions into the sarcoplasm. When calcium is in the sarcoplasm, it, it is able to bind to troponin. When calcium binds to troponin, troponin will undergo a conformational change, which pulls tropomycin off of the myosin binding site. Now that the myosin binding site is available for binding, the crossbridge cycle can begin.